Hi again, part two of the breed study for the alpaca blended with um, 21 micron count merino. So I've already spun up nearly all this bobble, bobbin, bobble, bobbin, and I've got this much left over. So I've just drafted it out and then you can see the end results of what we've got so far. So I'm just going to spin this up and it's spinning up as a lovely worsted weight yarn with a halo on it even though it's quite thin once this gets washed and dyed it will plume out a little bit more so i'm just going to spin this off and get going on this so i literally just join it on i snap it off i'm sorry, i'll try and bring you a bit closer there we go. and i'll tilt you down a little bit as well so you can actually see what i'm doing so if you've never spun before or still find problems, when you, if your fibre falls off, you want to attach it. And a drafting out really well and um, is a really good point. And you want to create some sort of triangle when you're spinning it as well. Because then those fibres are all gathering together and come along. But when you need to rejoin it, like what I was showing on the art video the other day there when I was doing the art yarn, you literally try and pinch it with your middle finger and your right... Uh, your middle finger and your second to end finger of your left hand if you're right-handed opposite way if you're not if you're a left-handed spinner some left-handed spinners spin with the right hand um if you know what i mean they do it in opposite in the mirror image so you literally just put it towards the fiber there you can see me doing that now and it will catch on and then you just hold it very gently and just do it slowly until you know it's definitely joined on and then just spin through. This is a really loose carded fibre, so it's spinning out very, very thinly anyway. And I get little sections now and again where it wants to bulk out. And I'll show you in a minute where it does these moments. Because I have to have a little bit of a play with them if I come across any. And just thin them out, just tease back those strands. And then I've got this triangle. Can you see that? There's a triangle there when you're spinning. This is the sort of thing that you want to be looking for um, when you're getting a really good spin. Because these fibres that are in the middle, they're coming through, but they're pulling these edges along with them at the same time. And that's what you want to start off with. You want this lovely triangle in the end of your roving or on your stripped top bat and just spin. And this is, a, as I said, this is a very loose carded fibre that I've done. I've only put it through twice, as you've seen, blended with the, with the merino. Um, so it's more of a cloud that I'm spinning. So I'm getting a very, very thin, consistent spin off. So if you ever order any of my bats or anybody else's bats and you find that you're getting a lot of clumpiness and you're not getting an even consistency, just draft out your stripping from your bat a little bit more just to loosen up those fibers and you should find that it will spin up really fine without much effort or just strip it off in thinner strand, um, sections and then draft out really well so what what would potentially be say um, a 60 centimeter bat um, from top to bottom in the direction that the strands go in you should be able to get at least eight, eight to ten sections of inch longs from that side to that side off my bats. I don't know about anybody else's. I, don't, I very rarely order other people's bats because I just like the way that I do mine. Um, and then just draft them out and you'll probably find that it should draft out at least four times the length of the section that you've stripped off. And then that will help to loosen off those fibres. And it's really good to do that as well if you're trying to create a fractal spin from a gradient bat um, to get that sort of um, colour definition. Because usually when you pull it out and waft up the gradient bat, you end up with quite a wider section. So you should be able to get roughly two, two of the solid colour going into the next colour along. So it'll be three strips off of any one bat if you're doing a gradient to get a striping effect off your will so i'm just gonna spin this off put you on fast forward and i'll catch you on the other side
Okay, so that's me wound off the bobbin into a cake and center pool ball and use the outside. So easiest thing to do, definitely a top tip if you want to make sure that your wool um, is even, you're left with no extras left in your bobbin, which can be an absolute nightmare. Uh, I don't know how it does it, but you always end up with one bobbin still with about 10 grams of yarn left on it yet you've spun it perfectly and it just doesn't even up so my top tip is to wind your wool up into a cake you can get wool winders online for anywhere between 15 20 quid some you can get some lovely wooden ones for up to 50 pounds which is something that i always want to get myself as a treat but it's not a necessity i got mine at the charity shop and it cost me a tenner so just look up a wool winder or a cake ball winder or something like that and you'll be able to find these and it makes your job so much easier and you're left with no wastage so i'm just going to get on with doing this and i'll see you in a bit Okay, so um, now at the dying stage, so I've just put in a very small amount of grey dye into this pot. I may need to add some more water to it because I have taken the wool out of the sink after soaking. Um, coloured the water a little bit on medical coil, which is a good sign. So I'm just making sure that the dye dot is completely saturating in the water and I'm going to put in the wool that you saw me spin up. We'd normally do this in a big pot but I just wanted to be able to see. 
go, just make sure it's completely covered. I don't want it a heavy grey, I just want a wash of grey on this colour. Just make sure it's completely covering. Just enough to give it a nice subtle grey tones in this hand spun wool. And it's nearly done, there's already citric acid in there. I just want it to be nice and subtle grey tones and a lovely soft grey palette I'm just going to bring that down to a simmer now and just let that die off so next you can't quite see it in this light which is really weird but I'm actually dyeing this a lovely honey mustard you can just if I just tilt it there you can see a strange nope light is really not cool but you can just make out a lighter version but it should be a lot darker than that and it is a lovely honey glaze color to that so I'm just waiting for that to saturate now and then the next one I'm going to go for is a blue steel so I want these lovely colours. Now with the alpaca I always find you get quite muted tones, more dusky in appearance. I don't know if you want to see. No, you really can't see in this light, but I'm getting this lovely golden straw sort of colour. And it's really, really pretty. So I'll be back in a bit. Okay, so next I'm adding two small skeins to this blue steel and I've added a little bit more dye to this because I want it a true blue I don't want it um, sometimes when you dye with some pigments they'll come out with a an undertone of something maybe the a purple or a red or something like this but this should hopefully be a nice stormy stormy blue colour with any luck the way I want it. It looks like it's a charcoal grey on this camera but I promise you it's not. It is a blue like a, a dark indigo blue denim sort of look. So I'm just going to let that simmer away just gently until all the stock is cleared away. So that is the yarn you've just seen the picture then all um dyed up now i've got to go off and dye up another 100 grams of um wool but leave it as the natural the blend as well with merino so i'm just looking for the pattern i thought i would do for this hence the colors i've gone for if i can just find it it's in here somewhere this is from a scandinavian um knit book so the, there's a couple of patterns i quite like the look of so i liked that one then it's it lights no good there we go um with a headband there was one pattern of that one and there's another style of headband as well i think it's on the page before go with me a second oh every page but the page you want no nope, not that one there we go so there is that pattern of headband as well so i thought well that looked lovely and then yellow or go for something a little bit bigger and chunky so i was thinking of that one so i'm not quite sure which one i'm going to go for yet but this is from a book that i got at christmas by a lady called jenny fennel um knits from northern lands and there's some really lovely beginners to experience knitters patterns in there so i did actually mention this on my chat a couple of weeks ago Hi, so um, yeah, that's about it. I've done the history, the washing, the preparation, um, the carding, the spinning and the dyeing. Next, I'm gonna do the knit pattern. Um, so it'll be the pattern from the 
Jenny Fennell books of uh, North, uh, Knits from Northern Lands. Um, very easy books to do. Uh, patterns that I've really been wanting to challenge myself for for a while. So that's what I plan on doing. So the wool looks really nice. It's come out some really lovely colours that I'm, I was hoping for. I've just got to go up and pop up, as I say, go up and blend up some more um, carded bats in that blend and then spin them off. And then I've got some neutrals to complement the blue, yellow and grey. That is now drying with the rest of the, oh, there they come from my bike, also a bit of a sneak peek. So those are the colours that I did. And it should be a fawn colour as a natural, but it's actually a very soft um, pebbly grey that's on there. You're definitely not getting the true light of them, but I didn't want an overall grey on those colourways anyway. And I've just dyed up these, excuse the dog in the scruffy garden. So I've just dyed up these yarns. These will get listed tomorrow. Very, very pretty while I was doing those blends. So there we go. That's everything all done and dusted. Um, thanks very much for your support. I will be doing a video um, next week because it's Batty Club, so I'll be filming the making of that. So it'll be two weeks' time before you see another video uploaded onto the, onto the channel. Um, I will be around next Wednesday for my live chat for my weaving on the Wednesday at noon. If you want to come along and join me, set your subscription bells and it'll alert you when I'm online. Um, otherwise, come and join me on a Saturday lunchtime-ish um, over on Instagram. I always do chats. I try to be funny when and if the humour kicks in. There's always a bit of a rant and I get on my soapbox, but it's usually all in good nature and good humour anyway. Um, and usually whatever I'm up to on the day, either in the greenhouse or in my seeds or weaving or knitting or spinning or whatever it is I'm always welcome for a chat and any inputs or questions that you want answered if I can answer them I will do if you want any feedback um, you want to leave me feedback or any comments or suggestions for future content leave your comments down below um, answer everything all the time and if I don't know the answers I always go and look them up before I come back to you so take care of yourselves I hope you love this video parts one and two take care see you next time